The jinn have a very unique power, which is truly bizarre, and physicists who are Muslims should really marvel at this. From the story of uh, Suleiman and Sheba, uh, and that is the power to transform matter into energy and back into matter again. And that's something that we are trying to figure out how to do. E equals mc squared. Energy and matter are related. We know this. Uh, and the jinn have the power to do this. How do we know this? The throne. The throne of? Bilqis, or the queen of Sheba. The throne that from Yemen to Jerusalem. Qala ifritum min al jinn. Now, jinns are many levels, and ifrit are the most evil and the most powerful. So the ifrit said, I can bring you the throne before you even stand up. Which makes total sense, physically speaking, from physics, I mean. If the jinn can go and come back at the speed of light, and this one jinn is so powerful. Now, again, this is my two cents. It is as if Allah is saying, this is the max that any jinn can possibly do. Because Sulaiman had control over all the jinns. And one of them said, just one, which means the rest, they don't have that power, right? So we need to put things into perspective that the jinns are not all of them so powerful. One only said that he can do this. That was the strongest and the best. So therefore we need to understand that what is the strength of the strongest jinn that maybe we have ever seen? He can pick up the throne of Sheba. Okay, in these days a crane can do that. I'm just saying, right? It's not as if the jinn can pick a star up or the moon. It's a physical strength that we can understand. And what was supernatural for us was what? Is that to transport it. And it is well known that this throne is going to be inside the palace. That when if he were to take the throne, it would not be flying in the air. People are not going to see it flying. Rather, it would disappear there and appear in front of Suleiman, which means what? E equals MC squared here, right? Einstein was probably right in this regard. And this is what we believe if we believe in the story, that it is possible somehow the jinn have the power to take matter, transform it to energy, take it all the way back and then reproduce it. Right? And by the way, this is something that is well known mutawatir from the stories and, and, and whatnot that it is possible for a magician to just produce an item that was lost literally and it goes here it is. Right? So what are some of the character the physical characteristics of the jinn? What are the jinn made of? What type of fire? Smokeless fire. So if they're a type of energy, how fast can they go? Quite literally, the speed of light. Quite literally, they travel at the speed of light, right? If they're energy, then do physical structures block them? No, just like my phone is working right now and we're inside the room, right? Just like radio waves, just like other waves are coming into this room and the, the physical structure has nothing to do with them. They're made out of smokeless fire, so this makes them invisible to us, right? They have the capacity to transfer uh, from one energy to another, so they can become uh, physical and they can be seen to us when they want to. So how do they do that in our modern vernacular? They'll simply shift into the color spectrum of light waves. What is the only energy that we can, we can uh, see, I should say? It's a very small window, the, the colors of the spectrum, right? So the, the jinn have the capacity to just move their energy into that level, if you like. And they can then appear to us. They have the capacity to project their voice so that we can hear the energy of the sound. But it's all energy. So they are invisible. And Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ Iblis and his tribe can see you from places you cannot see them. So in this regard, they have the upper hand. They can see you and you cannot see them. They can make their presence known to you. You don't have any clue when, where they are or not.